Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well. Um, yesterday's video went down pretty well, it seems like, a lot of you agree, some of you disagree, which is totally fine, we all have our opinions and we are, you know, free to express them as long as there's respect, but I hope that, you know, in hindsight when I look at everything, I really hope that someone like Mason Mount succeeds, grows, learns, becomes someone that is a vital player for us, and why not, you know, he's young, he's still got a future much like much of the young lads and um yeah it'll be nice to see some Chelsea blood you know uh spurring through their careers at Chelsea and becoming let's not say the next John Terry who made it from youth to the end of his career but along that path you know it'd be nice to have a few others so fingers crossed but it was a very good conversation your comments were amazing that's why I wanted to mention this because your comments were really insightful and there's a lot of debate going on so that's really, really good. Let's do it again for this video. Now, before I get into everything, subscribe if you are new. Um, hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. That way you know when I've uploaded. Follow me on Twitch. Another Twitch stream after this video is done. Yes, more FIFA career mode. Let's try and... Uh, well, actually, we did recover from a 5-1 loss to West to West Brom. We beat Man City 4-3, and then I stopped at that point. So we're going to continue. I think I'm second in the league. Let's keep going. And let's see if we can win the title. <laughs> win something, at least. It would be nice. Um, but anyway, let's get into the topics at hand. And no, not the trim. I know I got a trim. And I'm kind of sporting the Oli Giroud look today. You know, um, the next thing I need is a beard. You know, I've done David Lewis. If the OGs on here will remember when I did the David Lewis. Anyway, um, I kind of did the Eden Hazard phase where I had like, you know, really short, uh, little stubble. And yeah, and Hazard. And now, you know, Giroud just without the beard. So yeah, you know, if I let a beard grow, I might be able to wrap up player number three and then we can see what player we jump onto next. Who should I do next? Um, I don't know. <sighs> Flipping hell. No one's got a funky hairstyle at Chelsea anymore, do they? Bloody hell. Anyway, let's get into it. Today, um, I want to mention two things. So one, we're going to talk about a player that we are apparently going for. And is a big target for the club. But there are two other clubs that want him as well. Before I, before I get into that, I want to mention something about Matthew Harding. Because today is the 24th anniversary of Matthew Harding's death and his passing. And for those of you that know who Matthew Harding was, great. For those of you that don't, he was uh, Chelsea's vice chairman. Um, in the in the early 90s to the mid 90s where he lost his life um, he invested a lot into Chelsea if you want me to summarize who Matthew Harding was in a nutshell imagine a Roman Abramovich without that much money but imagine a Roman Abramovich impact before Roman Abramovich that is Matthew Harding he injected quite a bit of his own money into the club to try and just help Chelsea grow and um, yeah as Chelsea's vice chairman done a lot unfortunately he died in a helicopter crash which to this day we still don't know what really happened you know there are people that say it was just an accident and there are people that are convinced there was something a bit darker and sinister at play and someone wanted him gone um I, I don't know. I really don't know. But anyway, you know, remembering Matthew Harding today, 24th anniversary of his death. And um, yeah, today thoughts are with him and his family. Um, let's get into the one transfer target that Chelsea Football Club are now linked with. We were linked with Declan Rice, right? It's clear that to the end of the summer transfer window, Chelsea wanted a defensive midfielder. And we didn't get one. <laughs> and you know we spent quite a lot of money and now there's a little bit of debate amongst Chelsea fans whether we should have actually gone out and bought another defender obviously because defensively we look a bit all over the place except for the game against Sevilla where we actually looked kind of solid except we done nothing going forward this time it's like you know we haven't got balance we've got you know it's either one extreme or the other but Defensive midfield was a position that's been discussed since, you know, the middle of the last window. We've all been debating, hey, is Declan Rice coming? Oh, is it not? Is it going to be Thomas Partey? Oh, it's not him. Is it going to be Declan Rice? Are we really going for Rice? Like, there was a lot of debate going on. Well, we are now linked with another 
defensive midfielder. And I have to stress, I now am beginning to think Declan Rice is not going to happen even in a future window. The latest rumour is that West Ham are going to offer him a very lucrative contract to remain at West Ham. And, uh, you know, as it stands, they wanted 80 million flip. And now if they get him on a new deal... They're going to, what, ask for what, 100, 150? Like, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> we, we, I don't think it's going to happen. We, we shouldn't go for Declan Rice now. If it's going to be that much money, we shouldn't. But a new target has popped up. And it's this guy, Dennis Zakaria. Dennis Zakaria of Borussia Mönchengladbach, who is a young talent and a very good one at that. Let me give you a few details on Dennis Zakaria, and then I'm going to talk about uh, the one obstacle that has kind of come in our way. An obstacle that we have previously faced and we've previously beaten twice. So I'll mention that in a sec. But who is Dennis Zakaria? He's 23 years old. One meter 90. <laughs> he's a tall, he's a tall, he's a lump. He's a lump. Yeah, basically he's a lump. But at 23 years old, the good things about him is he is a defensive midfielder who can play as a standard centre mid, as well as that can play as a centre back. So it's kind of a similar situation as Declan Rice, where we can see he's versatile and he doesn't just command just one position. He can play in another position and most importantly, centre back if he is required to do so, which is kind of key for us right now. We would like to have options at the back if we really, uh, you know, if we really want to, that would be nice. Um, but playing at Borussia Mönchengladbach, he is a Swiss international. A Swiss international with 28 caps at the moment, scoring three goals in those 28 games that he has played for Switzerland. And he's valued at, <laughs> it's nowhere near 80 million, that's good, you know, Declan Rice and whatnot, nowhere near that. He's valued at around 35 to 40 million tops. And this is good. This is good. You know, I reckon this is a deal that could be done possibly even in January. Even in January, it's not too high profile. Um, it, he's a young lad. It's a club where they are, I would say, a level below the standard of Chelsea. And don't get me wrong, Borussia Mönchengladbach are a very good outlet now. They're not like before. They're not nobodies. They are top. Of, they're not top of the Bundesliga, but they're you know in the in the upper bit of the Bundesliga table. They have been for the last couple of seasons. They've been playing very consistent football. Um, they're a very good team. They're a very good team. And, um, you know, it kind of helps because, uh, if if it's possible, I've got Ben Sabaini, who's Algerian international, and he's playing at Mönchengladbach, and he's smashing it for Mönchengladbach at the moment. But, you know, if I can get on the blower to, to him and be like, hey, can you tell him, you know, come to Chelsea. Come to Chelsea, please. That would be great. I'll try and see what I can do, lads. I'll try and see what I can do. Uh, <laughs> but... There's one obstacle. What is the obstacle, you ask? As I've said, it's an obstacle that we have previously encountered twice and beaten twice. Well, here it is. Chelsea I, Dennis Zakaria transfer, but face Michael Essien and John Obi Mikel repeat. What does that mean? Now, for those of you that know, right, for those of you that are clocked on to what happened with Essien and to what happened with Mikel, when we were going for them, and we got both of them, but when we were going for them, who are the club that uh, were constantly interested and almost signed both? Manchester United. Yes. Chelsea want to sign Dennis Zakaria, but Manchester United are also eyeing the Borussia Mönchengladbach midfielder. Chelsea remain interested in Gladbach midfielder Dennis Zakaria, who has been identified as a long-term target by the recruitment team at Stamford Bridge. Whispers emerged earlier this summer that Chelsea were looking at the Swiss international, but Frank Lampard decided to hold off a move despite spending £220 million. Now, obviously, he spent that much money. You know, without selling, it would be a little bit silly to go and get another player on top of that without actually balancing the books a bit and getting rid of some players, which it looks like we are going to do. But Manchester United want him as well. Man United wanted Essien. Boom, we got Essien. Man United wanted Mikel. Boom, we got Mikel. Man United want Dennis Zakaria. Boom, guess what? We are going to get Dennis Zakaria. Third time lucky. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's the way the world works. Fingers crossed, anyway. Fingers crossed. When it does come to it, which, I, again, I'm expecting could be around the January transfer window. If not, then next summer, I reckon we can nail him. 
I reckon we can get Dennis, Dennis Zakaria. And I urge you guys, go and have a look at him. Go and watch Borussia Mönchengladbach play. As I've said, I've, I'm someone that does keep up to date somewhat with Mönchengladbach just because there is an Algerian international playing and a very good one at that. Ben Sabaini is top class at the moment and it's nice to keep an eye on him and all the other Algerians playing. But um, yeah, with what I've seen in Mönchengladbach, he offers a lot of balance. He's very physical and very quick. Very, very, very ideal for the defensive midfield that we need in order to create the balance that we are kind of missing at the moment. So let's wait and see what happens. But that is the latest uh, to give you. Chelsea are after Dennis Zakaria, but they face competition from Manchester United. Who's going to get him? Well, it's 2-0 to Chelsea. How about we make it 3 Come on, you blues. Thank you so much for watching. Is that going to be my score prediction for this weekend against Man United as well? Make sure you tune in tomorrow when I give you my Man United versus Chelsea preview, which is going to be quite an interesting one because Man United all of a sudden look like they know how to play football. And um, based on last season where we could hardly flipping beat them, I don't know how or why, but we always struggled against Man United last season. I'm hoping that's not the same case this weekend. We kind of need to win this one and not lose. That would be great because uh, if we lose, it's, it's, it's honestly not looking good. But I'll get into all the detail tomorrow in the preview. Make sure you are subscribed to catch that and be notified when that is uploaded. Hit the like button. Let's try and get to 7,000 likes. Make sure you are following me on Twitch. I will be streaming once this video goes live. So the early lot who catch this video as soon as it's uploaded, when you're finished, hop onto Twitch and let's, uh, let's play some career mode and try and see if we we can keep Chelsea top of the league. I'll see you there. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a good one. Look after yourselves. Take care and peace.